What is up you guys and welcome to the Valhalla Pokemon League Battle, I was gonna say Season 4 Team Analysis with Scandinavian Stufflands. Yeah, that rolls just out your tongue, doesn't it? It really doesn't. <laughs> that said though, uh, really happy to actually be back in the League concept now with Ultra Sun and Moon is out. Um, I believe we're fairly late for a league, actually, I do believe we're waiting 10 weeks before starting. Uh, for different reasons, basically, but, you know, having a child really was one of them. But just overall, I just really want to see how the meta settled. Um, since we did see a few Pokemon being too overpowerful or not in the game, or, you know, some even got, well, banned by default. So, with that in mind, we definitely waited to actually start it. So, but we decided to draft uh, actually uh, one week earlier than we was supposed to. So I didn't have necessarily a team idea of what I want to create. But one thing definitely stood tall. I really wanted to use certain Pokemons that I haven't done before. One of them was actually Mega Tyranitar, which is definitely going to bring or draft something with Mega Tyranitar in mind. Since it's not a very, very good um, League Pokemon would say it's very unconventional, but then again, the meta has kind of shifted quite a lot and it actually does work fairly well now as a Pursuit Trapper, so that was my initial thought. Um, also, we have a concept here that if you're a part of the MVP, you're actually able to keep your Pokemon. Uh, my Pokemon that I could keep was a bus wall, I decided to not keep it, basically because I want to try another fighting type, so I decided to leave the mailman behind. And I'm fairly glad what I got. So with that said, we're going to go over my picks. There are 10 Pokemon for my draft. You can draft between 8 and 10 uh, since we're all on a budget. But I decided to have the broader aspect to actually get in my opponent's head. So with that said, let's start off with my first pick. So the first Pokemon I decided to pick up was actually Kamo. Kamo is a Pokemon I really, really want to try for quite some time. Um, it wasn't as good in the Sun and Moon, so in Ultra Sun and Moon, that's close combat, we got the Omni Boost, and of course, a, a variety of punching moves to get away the likes of actually Stealth Rocks. So the variety on Kamo got a lot better, though we have banned Omni Boosting mainly because it does kind of, you know, become kind of easy to strat up against somebody. Uh, it still is a very, very threatening Pokemon in this elite concept, and uh, yeah, just overall. It's a very good Pokemon, and I'm definitely looking forward to using it, actually. Um, it is one of those really weird Pokemon with, a, what I would say, a very strange mixed offensive stats. Uh, you know, 1 to 10 in attack, and 100 special attack, and then defenses are really high, 1 to 25 in regular defense, and 105 in special defense. The only downside to combo, I would say, is its speed of 85. It is its very speed. However, it is a Pokemon that can use Autonomize and Dragon Dance and Boo being very, very, very good. So overall, I definitely see Kamo as a primary threat and are looking forward to using this Pokemon just overall because I do believe it packs Quara Punch against a lot of teams and just works very, very well. It isn't that I would say it's the strongest Dragon type for a Dragon Fairy Steel Call, but what I'm trying to do, I get a variety, which is something I haven't tried before for hyper offensive playstyle. This could be very benefiting, and I'm really looking forward to use Kamo overall, actually, because it's a, just as I say, a very, very interesting Pokemon due to this very reason. My next pick was actually Jolteon. Now, I picked Jolteon fairly early because it's a Pokemon that has a tendency to go fairly mid, I guess, drafts. Because I really wanted Jolteon this time around. Or rather, in my previous season, Jolteon did a massive amount of work for my team. And eventually, just it became very interesting to see the Jolteon, how it functioned with the variety it brings to the table with two really keen abilities in Quick Feet and Volt Absorb. It was one of my best Pokemons actually overall, so I just really wanted to try it out one more time because I believed I was knocked out fairly, fairly uh, unfair because of course of misses of High Jump Kick and whatnot versus my opponent in the quarterfinals. And I was really well bummed about that because I believe I had ways of actually winning the league completely. That said, though, we got Jolteon back. Jolteon really just needs no introduction. It's a very strong private Pokemon. 1 in 10 in special attack and 1 in 13 speed. That's really all you need to know. It has, it has special defense of 95, but its HP and attack is fairly low. All, all around 60s somewhere. Um, I do believe attack is 65, actually. But yeah, overall, you don't talk about Jolteon and its physical prowess, you talk about the speed and the special attack it brings. Usually this Pokemon basically refine what I would believe is what Electric-type should be, which is in 
impossible to touch yet so quick and hit so hard and can get out of a tough situation now one thing that really stands out for Jolton is this Moopal isn't as broad as it's actually legendary brethren but what it brings to the table is reliance in its old switch capabilities and you know supportive moves that can be very useful such of course synchronized but definitely one that stands out for me is heal bell and john which are just what i would say defensive supporting moves that you don't expect for a pirate pokemon so overall looking forward to use jolteon as a whole and just really glad to see that it could be drafted to my team again so yeah jolteon awesome type draft it mm. So, with the Volt Switch out of the way, I needed the U-turn, and Scissor represented just that. Scissor is actually a Pokemon that has a tendency to go fairly early. Since Lele is banned for this league, it means the viability of priority is fairly high, actually. And Scissor represents just that. You are going for that technician, bullet punch, or quick attack, and you have the U-turns, and you have a very strong combination of a bug steel, which is, in my opinion, one of the more complete type combinations in the game mainly because you actually are immune to poison you resist the grass and you have resisted the bug dragon fairy ice normal psychic steel and only have one weakness to actually whittle itself around with which is fire which is something that aka berry can help to actually prevent in worst case scenario plus scissor is actually fairly bulky while it does have a fair attack set 130 is its attack so i believe it's definitely a scary pokemon we have 17 hp 100 in defense 80 in his special defense and 65 while not the speediest pokemon around it has a very fair speed here and of course 55 in special attack if you want to use the vacuum wave i'm not <laughs> but yeah scissor has a lot of options and just overall a very very good setup pokemon it is one of those pokemon that individually is very very bulky and doesn't necessarily rely on speed to actually withstand and output its damage. I really like Scissor for that many reason. Um, I do believe it can work very well with the conjunction I was starting to actually recreate. And getting the U-turn and Volt Switch capabilities do kind of narrow down my aspect of what I wanted to aim for next. And just overall, Scissor is a very viable Pokemon League concept just because you can be more specific about your technician boost, which is something you can't do in the tier. So yeah, it's a stronger threat here. While I would say the Mega Scissor is more viable, I definitely would say regular Scissor has something to bring to the table also. So with my Dragon and Steel type already of course established, I really needed to draft a Fairy type. And God of War is just one of those fairies that I really, really like to rely on. Uh, use it in, I do believe this is like the fifth time I'm drafting it in a league, so uh, it's probably one of my most recurring Pokemon in a league concept. The reason God of War is so great is because its dual stab is fairly alright, hits everything fairly high outside of steel types, and with an ability in Trace, which really allows it to actually, I would say, avoid being swept by weather teams actually can trace the possibility of a possible ability to outspeed anything and become very very ferocious at that aspect. I do believe the only Pokemon that is able to counter that is Excadrill and since it's not drafted, well, we're in a good spot is what I'm trying to say. And uh, yeah, overall Guard were really really good. While I would say it's one of those primary really good C user, uh, it's not gonna be that for the start off here. Um, I decided to actually bring that to another Pokemon, but Garwar can be a very reliable C user with C Focus Blast and whatnot. But overall, you know, it has not necessarily the best. Actually, I would say its stats relies a lot or looks similar to Jolteon's, that is, we have 68 in HP, I do believe, and then 65 in both attack and defense, very low, that is, then 125 in special attack, 115 in special defense, and then 80 in speed. So I would say, you know, the special attack and speed and are kind of switch against the Jolteon and whatnot, but we hit more or harder with God of War, yet we have usually the damage output to do fairly alright. A Spix variant of this or Salt Vest or Scarf will usually be very reliable and dependable depending on the situation. But overall, just God of War is a very good Pokemon who can very well adjust to any, any type of a tough environment, which is something I really, really appreciate out of a Pokemon. And being a fairy type to be able to actually force out dragons, yeah, that's extremely helpful. And of course, the Sake do actually ensure that no poison type actually can take advantage of the fairy situation, which is something I really appreciate. So overall, Garb is a very strong Pokemon draft in the league, and I'm glad to have that Pokemon back in my team.
So with the fairy drafted, I needed the bulky water type, and who isn't bulkier than Jellicent? Jellicent actually is one of those really interesting Pokemon, because it's a Pokemon that is specifically drafted for one reason, and that is to nullify other water types, actually. Because it is what I would say an anti-lead, a bulky water, and actually a stall breaker. Uh, because not only do we get water absorb, which is really nice, we also get the curse body, which is seriously some messed up stuff already. But one thing that Jillson really does well is it gets taunt. Uh, it has a very decent dual stab combination of ghost and water. While it isn't best defensively typing, I definitely believe there are better. We still have, I do believe, two immunities, which you know the ghost immunity to fighting a normal. Then we have the resistances that really are standing out in bug, fire, ice, poison, steel, and water. But we have a lot of weaknesses. We have dark weakness, electric weakness, ghost weakness, and grass weakness. And uh, dark weakness is definitely one that are standing out the most. The other can be covered around fairly all right, but it's an issue that is inborn with a ghost type. Uh, what Jellison does have though that does make it very well and or, or should would say uh, reliable here is that it has a very high mix bulk, 100 HP stand and we have 70 defense, 105 in special offense. So there aren't necessarily things that go to hurt it too much. That said, its special attack is fairly alright, 85, we have 16 base speed so it's definitely one of the slower Pokemon I drafted. But overall Jellison super reliable broad move pool and taunt and I've drafted it so many times uh, because it works great as a spin blocker but just as a whole the type combination really messes up certain matchup and with the right resistance berry this Pokemon just thrive in almost any environment which makes Yelicent or the Pringles man basically one of the best Pokemon to draft in any league so really glad to have him back on my team so yeah with that said i needed to now get a power off rapid spinner because i already got my defoggers in scissor so for my spinner i decided to draft something that are a bit of a low viability in the league concept and that is cryogonal it actually is the least amount of point pokemon that i got but as a whole here try cryogonal damn it's a hard name to say uh, it's a very, very good Pokemon on its own merits. It's not as good in its tier that is in the league. What I mean by that is that here we can be specific what we face, which is something you don't have a luxury in doing in the tiers. And Ice Soul typing, not really that good. We resist Ice, and then we have four weaknesses uh, in, I believe that's Rock, um, Rock, Fighting, Fire, and Steel. Uh, one thing that's really good with Kroganol as a spinner is that it has Levitate, which means that we have immunity in for Toxic Spikes and regular Spikes, but we are weak to Style Frogs and that's not going to go away. What is good though is that Kroganol gets Recovery in Recover. Uh, it has a very high HP stat actually of 80, and its uh, defense is 50, it got raised this generation, so it's definitely better than it was before. 95 in Special Attack, 135 in its special defense and its speed tier is really really high 105 yeah that's gonna mess up a lot of pokemon garchomp got nothing on this guy and quite honestly with freeze dry as one of these primary moves there are a lot of aspects to Krogan to make a very 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 viable pokemon and i don't know i don't believe i see it often enough to really give it the appreciation it needs because it's one of those pokemon that strategically works very 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 good Ice typing usually as a dual combination isn't necessarily all too good, so being a soul ice type actually works in its favor because it means that you can be specifically which Pokemon should defense a defense check against what, and that is something that I really look forward to use. So Kroganol, a very very welcome Pokemon to my team, and definitely one of the better ones here if I'm going to be completely honest. So the next Pokemon I really drafted here was actually Stoutland. But as you guys see now, we are having Landers Incarnate here. Uh, and the main reason here is because I actually wanted to have Mega Tranitar and Landers. Landers is one of those Pokemon that can only have Sand Force actually in this league concept, which made this Pokemon not as viable, but it still is a very good Pokemon. Uh, so being only Sand Force meant that it needed the sand, and Mega Tranitar represented just that. Uh, and I stated I got Southland for Sand Rush. What is unfortunate here is that I actually got sniped and missed out on actually getting me a Tranitar because another player got it even though his team didn't encourage it to have a sand population that said though you know Mega Tranitar is individually very very strong so 
I don't mind that, but it did dent my idea of what I want from my draft format. However, a lander's eye still remained for a lot of very, very prominent reasons. One of them being that lander's is a defogger and a very good one at that, even though lander's T is the better reliable one. Uh, I really can't deny that Lander's Eye brings something else to the table. It is speedier than Lander's T. We have the um, same set, have 89 in HP, 90 in defense, 80 in special defense. So really, those stats stand on their own. It's, they're not bulky, but it definitely isn't um, weak from any sense of imagination. It definitely can take a hit or two, even though its typing is very weak to ice. But the 125 in attack and 115 in special attack, yeah. Landers, I really just pick a punch here. 105 in speed, uh, 101, I mean, in speed, it will be very helpful. Now, the type combination itself, as stated in my Who is Really Better videos, it is one of the better ones. We have two immunities in electric and ground, a resistance and bug fighting poison, while going weak to against the likes of water and very weak to ice. Basically, if you have a bulkier water type, you will be able to do just fine. Uh, which means that Yellicent and Lando will work very well synergized well together. And just overall, um, it's a stealth rocker, it's a setup sweeper. The options for Landers are very, very, very high. Even though it isn't a tier Ethereum form, it can still actually threat a lot of matchups fairly all right. And Sandforce can still be viable against imposing teams that try to use it because the damage output are still there. So, yeah, we got the Earth Genie, and I'm actually looking forward to using this Pokemon. Um, I had used Lander's Ferion before and I was very happy with how that worked and I really hope that Ferion can um, um, learn giving me some aspect of how to use Incarnate because if anything I'm very glad to be able to use this Pokemon but I am unfortunate to say that you know we dropped Stoutland which means that we got another normal type in its place. So I've been waving around between two normal types since I started the League concept and uh, if I'm not grabbing stuff, then I'm grabbing the other one, and the other one is Tauros. Tauros is just one of those Pokemons that in a league concept is so much more valuable because it's a 110 speed tier, so that's a lot of levels, if anything. But it's Moople, and with Shea Force having things boosted, of course, with that in mind, it makes Tauros very tough to be dealing with. And uh, it says it can't be specific in sets, it means it works a lot better than what it usually does in a regular kind of sense, of course, in regular settings. But the body slam is your bread and brother, and then you have a special attack of choice if you're going to hit something for four times effectiveness. And uh, yeah, then you basically rock slides and headbutt. You know, the, the options here are kind of limitless. You have earthquake, wild shards, you need to use them too. Though you want to capitalize on share force boost most of the time. However, Tauros do lack, of course, a proper fighting move and it does like a fire, a proper fire physical move. But I do believe overall that Tauros is one of the more ferocious Pokemon League cons to be dealing with because you don't face it too often, you don't know necessarily how it works. And once you face a Tauros, you realize that, you know, it can do everything and does it just fine. And uh, that's a very, very rare thing to be having. You actually get Intimidate too if you want to be a player more defensively. And uh, yeah, just overall, it works fairly right against any team. And this is a Pokemon I just wanted to grab for speed here alone because I was no longer relying on a weather condition to be able to have speed Pokemon. That means that I needed something that was reliably more checkable than previously. So Tauros, extremely viable, very glad to have it on my team and looking forward to using it yet again in another season of the Valhalla Pokemon League. So with that said, I needed to draft another Mega Pokemon, I needed to create a core with a rock in mind, so I wasn't weak to the flying spam. So with that said, I got a Mega Pokemon that is called Mega Venusaur. Now, surprisingly enough, I haven't used Mega Venusaur ever, and um, I'm definitely looking forward to using it, because I hate facing it. Uh, you know, its new ability in Thick Fan actually kills two of its weaknesses in Fire and Ice which means remain of the typing that you're weak to are only flying and psychic while resisting grass, electric, fairy, fighting and water. So this is a Pokemon that can work very, very good with Landers too. And just overall, its attack is, uh, or its stats overall are very good, but its attack is raised to 100, 123 in defense, 122 in its special attack, 120 in its uh, 
special defense and AD as its irregular form is and the base speed. Uh, but overall, it gets a very, very good chunk of races. Uh, I really like that this defense race is very high here because it means that this Pokemon can play a very, very bulky game while being offensive. It's definitely a tank, consider a special attack. And uh, its move pool is fairly large. You know, we get the likes of Earthquake and Knockoff outside of actually the regular stabs. And this Pokemon can go physical or special, even though it has a special, a higher special attack. But overall, Mega Venusaur is a Pokemon I will look very much forward to using. I'm not accustomed to using it at all, and uh, I definitely believe my hyper offensive playstyle can be interesting when a Pokemon with actually designed such as this, because I think it can bring so much to the table. So with that said, Mega Venusaur, a very, very keen choice to my team, and a very good check to possible finding types in the future, and its ability just resolves issues that it has naturally, which is really cool, because you don't see that often with Mega Pokemon, that actually resolve defensively issues that a Pokemon could be carrying, Mega Venusaur, one of the really, really cool, or if not the better ones, because of that very reason alone. So for my last Pokemon, I needed something that really resisted flying stab outside of Jolteon, and I decided to draft a Pokemon that I have reliably used forever. It is a Pokemon that have um, a lot of issues, depending on how you use it. And it always, because of its type and combination, is involved in the Pokemon that might not be as good. I uh, I really want to argue the differ. I definitely believe that Rhyperior is, uh, if not the best, at least one of the best rock types in the game. And a rock ground combination is a devastating dual combination to have while it isn't defensively too speedy here i was going to say defensively speedy it isn't too speedy but it is defensively very capable and with his ability solid rock there really aren't too many issues that's going on with riperior i think that is what makes riperior so interesting it has reckless which you're never going to use in lightning rod but as stated a solid rock and being able to get a 25% resist or a reduction of your super fade if it towards you really is very benefiting. Now it has a very high HP set, 1 of 15, 1 of 14 attack, so basically this is a Pokemon that, you know, if you don't go through him, he goes through you. It's, it's basically like that, you can't kill him in one shot, he'll definitely resolve that against you. 1 of 30 defense, yeah, it's not going to go down by a physical attack. However, it's special attack and the special defense of 55, so it definitely takes a larger chunk there. And of course, the speed here of 40, mm, not, not too cool. It is definitely not too cool. But overall, the type combination does allow it to work really, really, really interesting. And it actually has just as many resistances as it has weaknesses. It has immunity in electric, uh, resistance to poison, and uh, resist to fire, fly, and normal rock, while weak to finding ground, ice, steel, and of course very weak to grass and water. However, solid rock will solve a lot of chunk of these, and it's probably one of the few Pokemon I would say that the solid rock really does kind of help. Uh, it's worse for getting solid rock and not have too many weaknesses or to filter, which is you know, looking at aggro for example. Uh, if you're pure steel type, yeah, there aren't that many things that are going to hit you super effectively. This time, this will happen, and to be able to actually probably um, choke those hits, I was going to say, but eat those hits for a little right and retaliate, it makes Rapier one of the devastators of the tiers, and in a league concept, this could be very, very tough to be dealing with. And just overall, people tend to sleep on this Pokemon because the thing is easy to take out. What they fail to see is you can't switch in on this Pokemon because whatever comes in will pretty much die. Um, it's just 140 attack pretty much means that nothing really is safe switching into with this Pokemon, which is why I love using it. But yeah, that's the complete draft. And quite frankly, um, just looking at it as it is, there aren't that many things I'm disappointed with in this draft. While I do lack a fire and dark type, which is something I was looking towards actually gaining, I definitely say this, I don't think uh, my team is any worse off than it would have been. If anything, I think um, being sniped out of Tarantar meant that my team got more in depth with one another. Uh, had I gotten Mega Tarantar in Stoutland, I would have been very weak to fighting. I would have been actually... I would still rely quite a lot on defensive checking with Jillicent. I don't have to do that now and uh, I think as a whole my team works better towards it just because of that very reason so I'm actually fairly happy with how things turned out and just overall 
Really, really cool team. I really like this organization. Even though I don't have too many new Pokemon as I was hoping for, uh, I'm still going to say that this team could very well be in the runnings for, uh, for you know, gaining that elusive league championships, which is something I've been hunting forever. But overall, really just glad to play the game again. And uh, I hope to cover not outside of my battles or also other people's battles. And uh, just to tell you guys how it's going on. Uh, but hopefully we do really well this season. Um, I really like the team synergy here. And uh, I don't think I'm going to have a team matchup that are too tough for us because of this synergization alone. So with that said, as all the guys, thank you for of course watching. I hope you enjoyed this episode of the Battle of Pokemon League and the team analysis. And yeah, looking forward to actually showcasing games from this season. So thank you for watching guys, and I'll see you of course in the next video. Until then, as always, take care.